CBC Steven, Steven D'Souza, rather, has been listening in, joins us now. Uh, Steven, what stood out to you? Well, it's interesting. Uh, you know, what we're seeing with Donald Trump is what we've, seen in, what we've seen in the past when he speaks at the United Nations, which is essentially a campaign speech, his America first message uh, delivered to a worldwide audience, but still very much speaking to constituents at home. And of course, that is more uh, amplified now because we are in an election year for the president seeking re-election. And so you saw a very brief uh, by Trump standards speech, really distilling his message down quite a bit and using the opportunity as we expected to attack China. Uh, Trump has used China as a bit of a political scapegoat to deflect from attention of criticisms of his own mishandling of the coronavirus pandemic, even using the term China virus, which he's used quite a bit domestically, using that on the world stage now, attacking China not only for their handling of the pandemic in the early stages, but as well for their environmental record. And then Trump, as you mentioned, highlighting some of the things he's done on the world stage, talking about some of the peace deals he's worked out in the Middle East, uh, as well as work on ISIS in Afghanistan as well. And also talking about the Iran nuclear deal, which is an interesting one because uh, just over the weekend, the US tried to impose new sanctions on Iran, but the rest of the world sort of shrugged and said, we're not going to go along with it because you pulled out of the Iran nuclear deal and those sanctions were part of the nuclear deal which the U.S. walked away from. So it's interesting because the overall subtext when Trump speaks here is that he's really not shown much confidence in the United Nations. Multilateralism is at stake. That's something the Secretary General talked about. And so when they hear Trump speak about these kinds of things, they, they think, you know, he's here he is trying to undermine the U.N. yet also talking about the importance in, in some cases of America first. And so uh, interesting to hear what the president had to say. Earlier, the secretary general spoke and delivered quite an ominous message saying that the world must be focused on dealing with COVID-19 and the pandemic must come together. This is a defining moment because this is the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. But as you can see behind me, it's very quiet here because of travel restrictions, because of the pandemic, world leaders had to deliver their messages pre-taped. All of the delegates, all of the NGOs that usually would be here simply aren't here this year. So that has an effect on things. And so the Secretary General says the world needs to come together to deal with the pandemic and to deal with the economic fallout and the cultural fallout from that as well. And so some pretty stark messages being delivered here at the United Nations from the Secretary General's point for the world, but for Donald Trump's perspective, very much for an audience at home. Stephen, thank you. You're welcome. Those who attack America's exceptional environmental record while ignoring China's rampant pollution are not interested in the environment. They only want to punish America, and I will not stand for it. The CBC's Stephen D'Souza is at the UN in New York. Steve, what else stood out to you from Donald Trump's recorded speech? Well, you know, when Donald Trump speaks at the United Nations, it's often a speech not so much directed at world leaders, but also at the electorate here in the United States. And of course, with the re-election campaign well underway, that was more important this year than ever. And so he took the opportunity to also attack China over its handling of the coronavirus pandemic, uh, attacking them for allowing the virus to spread and for not clamping down on travel by uh, the Chinese when the virus was initially initially seeding in that country. And he also uh, used some uh, cherry pick statistics to gloss over how the U.S. has handled uh, the pandemic itself. And we've seen the president use in his campaign speeches China as a bit of uh, a political cover to gloss over the criticism that he's faced for his handling of the pandemic. As you mentioned, he also highlighted some of his uh, role on the international stage, highlighting uh, the no normalization deals in the Middle East that uh, have been reached over recent weeks and promising that are more to come. He also talked about the UN in general, saying that he always likes to put America first and that other countries should take care of their own first as well. Take a listen to what he had to say. Only when you take care of your own citizens will you find a true basis for cooperation. As president, I have rejected the failed approaches of the past, and I am proudly putting America first, just as you should be putting your countries first. 
Now, his message stood in contrast to the Secretary General's speech, where he said that the world needs to come together to deal with the coronavirus pandemic. As well, Xi Jinping, the Chinese leader, he spoke just after uh, the president and spoke in, a very, in very different terms, talking about the world coming together as well, speaking very diplomatic terms, offering aid in terms of vaccine as well as funding for the UN. To, deal, to help other countries uh, deal with the pandemic. So a very different feel from both countries. You heard China and the U.S. Interesting because a lot of analysts say that China is really asserting itself here more at the U.N. as the U.S. pulls back from this organization. And Canada will have its turn Friday when the Prime Minister will address the U.N. Uh, this comes, of course, after Canada lost out on a Security Council seat. What are you expecting from that speech? What's interesting, uh, the new ambassador to the UN for Canada is Bob Ray, the former Liberal MP, and he was just installed in August after the Security Council vote. And so I asked him just how Canada recovers from that, and he was telling me that, you know, Canada over the years at the UN has spent more time off the Security Council than on the Security Council. And the Security Council itself has faced a lot of criticism for inertia and just its inability to really deal with the problems that have been associated with the pandemic. And so he says that for Canada to succeed, it has to focus on other parts of the UN. They will be holding a meeting later this week on financing for redevelopment, helping countries rebuild after the pandemic. And he spoke about just why Canada has to act in other ways. Take a listen to what Bob Ray had to say. We've got to move uh, around the Security Council. We've got to move around the, the paralysis that, that exists there and the, the, uh, the jockeying for position that's taking place among the, among the P3. And we've really got to move forward outside that framework as much as we possibly can. We've got to be nimble. Uh, we've got to be creative in terms of the alliances that we, that we have. And I think when we do that, we can make some progress. So China is, uh, sorry, rather Canada, sorry, is speaking uh, later this week on Friday. The Prime Minister will be delivering those remarks. And of course, as you can see behind me, because of the pandemic, all of the leaders uh, decided to stay home because this is unlike any other event in the past, even though it is the 75th anniversary of the United Nations, the Secretary General saying the pandemic has shown just why the UN is important and how important its mission is. But when you hear from leaders like Donald Trump, they say, quite the opposite. So uh, more speeches to come throughout the week here at the United Nations General Assembly. For sure. Stephen D'Souza at the United Nations in New York.